lo and behold, yet another affordable astrophotography camera enters the scene. Welcome back to the beautiful Swiss Alps. I'm out here with the TubeTech ATR 585 monochrome camera, which I've been testing out over the past few weeks, a month. If you saw my review of the ZWO ASI 585MC Air a couple months ago, you might remember I said something like, Everybody and their mother is releasing new IMX 585 based cameras and they just keep getting better and cheaper. And honestly, that is the best possible news for all of us because the more options we get, the better the pricing becomes and the easier it is for people to get into deep sky imaging without breaking the bank. And this? This is TubeTech's answer to that growing market. In today's video, I'll walk you through my experience testing this camera over the past few weeks, what worked well, what I didn't really like, how it compares to other options, and what the current purchase options look like, because there are now a few different bundles to choose from. My name is Lutza and you're watching The Space Koala. This camera actually launched a few months ago. At the time, it was sold as standalone hardware. If you wanted to use it for astrophotography, you still had to buy the filter wheel and the filters separately. And once you added all of that up, the full setup could cost you around $1,500 if you got everything from TubeTech, which to be fair was a decent deal at the time. But with the fact that we have the QHY Minicam 8 on the market, which includes the filter wheel with the filters and comes in at a much more affordable price, and which I've also reviewed here on the channel, I'll link that below, along with ZWO's very own, very reasonably priced 585 mono sensor, TubeTech had to do better to compete. And this market pressure has definitely worked in our favor as consumers because today TubeTech offers multiple bundles. And in the case of the one that I'll be showing today, for just under 1000 bucks, you get everything. The camera, the filter wheel, all the necessary adapters, and most importantly, a full set of astrophotography filters. That's a major discount compared to where it started. And it puts this camera in direct competition with the Minicam 8, but with a very different approach to flexibility and modularity. We won't be diving deep into the technical specs of the IMAX 585 that's already been covered extensively on this channel and everywhere else. Kuiv talks a lot about this sensor in his videos, for example. Instead, I'll focus on what makes this particular setup interesting in practice, how it performs in the field, how it compares to the other cameras I've tested, and what you actually get when you buy this bundle. Physically, the TubeTech ATR585M is a very compact camera. On the back, you've got a USB 3.0 port for data, a 12 volt DC input for power, and two USB 2 ports that function as a powered hub, perfect for connecting your filter wheel or focuser directly to the camera. The built-in hub is a small thing, but it really helps clean up the cable management. As it is a bundle, that means you get, of course, everything that is included with the camera itself. So the camera body, a USB 3 cable, a mains power adapter to 12 volt DC, and a couple of adapter rings. You also get everything included with the filter wheel. So the filter wheel itself, a full set of seven filters, that's LRGB, so luminance green, red, blue, plus the narrowband set, sulfur 2, hydrogen alpha, and oxygen 3, and all the accessories that come with it. So um, USB 2 cables, and the whole bunch of mechanical adapters. Basically everything you could possibly need with every combination of accessories and back focus you may want to use with your camera. And just a quick word about the filters themselves. These are TubeTech branded LRGB and narrowband filters, and they're surprisingly solid considering the bundle price. The narrowband filters that TubeTech sent to me in this bundle for testing are 6.5 nanometers wide each. This is true both for the one and a quarter inch and the two inch versions, whereas the 36 millimeter option gives you a narrower four nanometer bandwidth. Assembling everything was straightforward. The camera and the filter wheel connect solidly and all the adapters feel well machined. Mechanically, there's nothing fiddly. Everything just works. And thanks to the USB hub on the back of the camera, cable routing is clean and simple. There is one small thing I want to point out. The filter wheel body has open screw holes, likely meant for mounting an off-axis guider. But if you're not using one, those holes are exposed, which could lead to internal reflections or light leaks. 
there is no cap or cover included so I just used some electric tape to block them off. It's a small fix but I wish Tube Tech had included some sort of plug or mask in the box. Not a deal breaker, just something unsightly to be aware of. The sensor inside of this camera is the familiar Sony IMX585, a modern CMOS chip with 2.5 micron pixels. No M glow and excellent sensitivity, especially in the red end of the spectrum, that makes it a great choice for both broadband and narrowband imaging. This sensor is small with tiny pixels, which will be ideal to get smaller details even at lower focal lengths. Tuplex implementation also includes two-stage cooling and it works really well. In fact, I was surprised by how fast it cooled down. It easily hit target temperature within a couple minutes, even in warmer weather. I was initially a bit worried about potential frost or condensation on the sensor window, but that never happened, most likely thanks to the built-in dew heater, which is a very nice feature, especially at this price point. So overall, you're getting a proven sensor, great thermal performance, and a nice quality of life additions like the dew heater, which are usually reserved for more expensive cameras. One thing I really appreciate about this camera is that you get manual control over many things, such as the high conversion gain HCG mode. That's not always the case with other brands. For example, with the ZWO, the switch to HCG happens automatically at a fixed gain value, whether you want it or not. With the ATR585M, you can turn HCG on or off manually and then choose whatever gain value you want. For all of my tests, I had HCG enabled and was shooting at gain 100, which is the lowest available gain setting on this model. That setup gave me low read noise and plenty of dynamic range and I didn't feel the need to go any higher. In terms of usability compared to something like the QHY Minicam 8, this setup does involve one additional cable because of the separate filter wheel but this also gives you more flexibility. Everything is modular and you can swap out filters, the filter wheel or accessories later on which is something you can't really do with the more locked in systems. Overall the setup process with the ATR585M bundle has been smooth, the camera feels solid and works well and reliably but of course none of this matters if the images don't hold up so now let's head over to the computer and take a look at what the data actually looks like. I'll show you some of the results I got using this exact setup and we'll talk more about performance, image quality and whether or not this bundle is worth picking up. So we're here on my computer ready to go through my experience with the ATR585M and show you the images I captured during testing. Let's start with some basic calibration frames. This is a bias frame from 200 subs taken at gain 100 and an offset of 500, which by the way are the settings that I use for all of my images. It looks exactly as you'd expect, nothing unusual here. Next up is a 5 minute dark frame. I don't usually use darks with these cameras, but I shot this one just to show you. After stretching it, there's no M glow whatsoever. Zooming in, there are a few hot ish pixels here and there but they're few and far between totally normal now here's how the actual imaging went i started by pairing the camera with my scar fra 600 and the tube Stellavita as the control unit thinking it would be a nice almost all tube tech setup basically an asi air like experience but with this camera Unfortunately, I ran into multiple issues with the Stella Vita, so I didn't get much usable data from those first nights. About a week later, I tried again with the SCAR V80. That's the scope you saw earlier in the outdoor shots. Still using the Stella Vita, but this time I managed to get some sessions done, so I was feeling good about it until I processed the data and saw that dithering hadn't worked at all. Guiding looked fine, dithering was enabled, but the results showed very visible walking noise in the stacks, especially in the darker, noisier regions. It's not a nice look, but it's not the camera's fault. This was clearly a Stella Vita issue, so it wouldn't be fair to judge the ATR585M based on that. And 
so I decided to redo everything, this time running the setup from my Windows PC, the Prima Luce Eagle, using Nina. And surprise, surprise, everything worked flawlessly. The SCAM driver for this camera is very versatile. You can control high or low conversion gain modes. Um, you can turn the LEDs on or off. You can set this fan speed and, and so on. No guiding issues, no dithering issues, just clean operation. I did two more nights like that. Um, the second night was cut short by the clouds. Uh, but I still got a solid stack that proved the walking noise problem was purely a Stella Vita issue. Let's look at the images. Here is a single five minute shot taken with the Stella Vita. It looks fine, nothing wrong with the individual image. But when you look at the stack from that session, at first glance it's a nice hydrogen image until you zoom in and then that walking noise becomes obvious. That's why I wanted to redo the test still. I processed it anyway. I had quite a bit of RGB data from that session because I took some RGB shots every night to use for the stars. And so I used the RGB as the base and I added the H alpha data on top. It resulted in a clean, natural looking image with a bit of a DSLR vibe. And by the way, there were no halos visible on any of the filters. You don't see it here, but not even on O3, which is usually the problematic one. And now for the Nina images. This is the elephant's trunk nebula in a single H alpha frame. It looks identical to the Stella Vita image, but the stack, even though poor elephant is upside down, tells the real story that with Nina, dithering worked perfectly. And even in the darkest regions, there's no sign of walking noise. I also put the data together in a quick SHO palette. Um, the last night, as I said, was cut short and then the moon was coming up, so I, I didn't get as much O3 as I would have liked, but it's still a nice result and good enough to show the camera's capabilities. Overall, the ATR 585M performed exactly as designed. Zero issues with the camera, zero issues with the filter wheel, and zero issues with the filters. I also noticed something that they don't advertise, or at least I didn't see. The filters seem to be perfectly parfocal. During one session, I turned autofocus off in Nina just to check, and the focus didn't shift at all between filters. That's great news for anyone who doesn't want to run an autofocuser, though your mileage may vary, especially with faster systems. If you want a sensor, the ATR 585M is a good option, which gives you a lot of flexibility. But before you decide, remember that this is a very small sensor. Check the field of view you'll get with your telescope and make sure you're happy with it, because with longer focal lengths, you'll be very zoomed in and mosaics might be unavoidable. If you want a frustration-free experience, plan to use this camera with Nina on Windows and you'll have no problems. If you're planning to use it with the Stella Vita right now, be warned, in my experience and from what I've heard from some other users as well, it's just not ready yet. Maybe in six months or a year it will live up to its promises, but right now it just isn't there. If you're buying this camera, there are a few options and I'll link them below. There's the bundle I used and then there's a bundle which includes also an off-axis guider. If I were buying, that's the one that I would get. The review unit I have didn't include it, so I used an external guide scope, but generally I prefer off-axis guiders uh, for deep sky. The camera's direct competitors are the QHY Minicam 8 and the ZWO 585 Mono. Each has a clear selling point. If you're a happy user of the ZWO ecosystem and want to use the ASI Air, then the ZWO 585 Mono is obviously your only option. If, however, you're more of a Windows mini PC user running ASCOM and Nina, or you're on an indie setup such as StellarMate, then all three cameras should work equally well. Once you've established you're happy with the control system you'll be using, it makes sense to look at the price point. From a pure what you have to pay today perspective, the QHY is hard to beat. 
However, if you're thinking longer term and want a more future-proof setup, the ATR585M gives you far more flexibility. You can swap the filters, you can change the filter wheel, you can adapt accessories as your needs evolve, you can reuse the filters and the filter wheel on a different camera later on. Overall, I think this is a well-built, well-performing camera that's benefiting from the current wave of competition. It's pushing manufacturers to make better products at lower prices, and I hope that we will see the same competitive drive carry over to larger, more advanced sensors too. If you like this review, consider subscribing to the channel as I have plenty more on the way. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, I wish you clear skies.